to say praise the Lord. Brother Demon, can I throw a scripture at you? Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 4 and 5, I believe it is. Praise God. Amen. I just, you know, the song that they, the first song that they sang. Praise God. Can you back up one more scripture? Verse 3. Oh, okay. No, go back to 4. I'm sorry. Thank you. Amen. Remember that first song that they sang? Praise God. I can't remember it all, all the words. But this is what they were singing. They were singing this, they were singing this scripture basically, not verbatim, but there's one body and one spirit, even as you're called in what? One hope you're calling. The next one. This next one's what they're singing. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And one God. Amen. I like it, don't you? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All they were singing was what the scripture says. Amen. Praise God. Are you glad to be here tonight? Good to see you tonight, Sister Everett. Good to see you. Praise God. God is so good. I feel good. Hi, Angela. Is that my niece back here? Amen. She's here. She's usually working all the time. Working lady. We're glad she got to come and be with Ruby's here tonight. Amen. Praise God. Aren't we blessed? Man, oh man. She got in there last night and made food. Food. She made enough food for a week until John came over today. <laughs> <laughs> Twice he came for brunch and lunch. <laughs> I guess you call it that. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Well, God's good. God is so good. I'm glad you're here. Praise God. Anybody want to testify before I get going? God been good to you, done something, amen, for you. Praise God, all right. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God is good. Well, I told you Sunday uh, that possibly I would be uh, talking about the uh, Galatians chapter 6 uh, but I feel like I need to hold off on that for another week uh, I got plenty to teach on it right now I could go ahead and get started on it but I feel like I need to finish uh, something from last week I've talked some on this topic we've been talking about uh, what it means to be a Christian for quite a few Wednesdays now <clears throat> this is Wednesday night and uh, praise God and when, before we started this church we I was assistant pastor at another church uh, for a few years and uh, <clears throat> we had on Wednesday night was called Potter's Wheel I always liked that that's a good title in it for Wednesday night because you know what you do on a potter's wheel is you're, you're making vessels, you're shaping them. They're not completed. There's something that you're at the working on. And that's, that's what we want to do on Wednesday nights here is we want to get into the word of the Lord and, uh, and find out what it means to be a Christian and also helps us to, uh, you know, the things that please God, the things that don't please God, uh, the things to avoid and to watch out for. And our goal is making heaven our home. I want to go to heaven. And I want you to go to heaven. I want everybody here to go to heaven. That is that is my goal. And, and we was talking last week about things uh, to flee from. Remember what we talked about? Praise God. Some of the things. We've, we've mentioned uh, some of these things. 
uh, for a couple of weeks now. <clears throat> Last, we talked about our body being the temple of the Holy Ghost, and, and uh, we started off with flea fornication. Remember, that's what the scripture said. And uh, there were some other things that we were covering. I mentioned some on this uh, a little bit last week. Uh, but I want to, I, I just feel like that uh, people need a, a good understanding about what we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, it's things, uh, this temptation is very prevalent in our land, in our world. And even amongst Christians, it tries to overtake people. And man, we don't want to fall prey to anything. And there's some things that we need to, as Christians, we're not fleeing from the devil. We're, we're, we're uh, resisting the devil, and he's fleeing from us. But we want to, uh, the Bible teaches us to flee certain sins, stay away from them. If, Eve had had uh, fled from the forbidden tree instead of getting close to it, you know, the, the story might have turned out differently, you know. I know God knows everything in, from the beginning, but I'm just, you know what I'm saying? If, uh, <clears throat> if we stay away from certain things or if we are, are, are awake, conscious, how to stay in a, in a place where we don't fall vulnerable to temptation that would take us away from God. I don't want to fall away from God. I've come too many miles to go back now. Amen? Praise God. So that's what we're here for. Uh, <clears throat> praise God. We're here to uh, stay awake, stay conscious, live for God, serve Him. And uh, tonight we're going to teach something. Praise God. We're going to turn to 1 Timothy 6 and 10 and 11. You may say, well, oh, brother, have you already talked about that? Well, I did, but I want, to, I want to go through some scriptures. I talked some about it. Like I said, I got the uh, what you sow is what you're going to, what you reap, sow is what you're going to reap. I could do all that. I got several things on that. I was going to do that tonight, but I just feel like I need to cover this right here and, and uh, <clears throat> probably won't covered again next week i'll probably start on that lord willing and uh <clears throat> but anyway let's go for it praise god first timothy paul to a uh, young minister by the name of timothy praise god they were establishing churches setting things in order that needed to be set in order in the churches that had just started and uh, so he was instructing him on how to instruct the Christians. If he was here tonight, uh, and he would teach the same things that he uh, they, that he had penned here. Amen. He'd teach them to Christians today. Praise God. He goes and says, there's a lot I could read, but I'm just kind of jumping in the middle to get the meat out of it, of what we're talking about. 1 Timothy 6 and 10, it says, For the love of money. Remember me saying that last week? The love of money is the root of all evil. It doesn't say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, roots are things that are out of sight. Amen. If you want to get to the root of evil, it's, that's what the Bible is saying here. The, the love of money, love of it, amen. The drive to have it, the drive to get it, whatever the cost, amen. Praise God. The love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have done what? Erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Amen. It doesn't mean linger. Remember we talked about lingering around like Lot lingered in Sodom? We don't want to do that. Flee these things. In other words, don't become prey to that. Don't fall into that. Amen. In fact, don't linger around it. 
Amen. Whatever it is that that uh, tries to propel you into that, get away from it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't work a job and take care of your bills, and, and it's not wrong for you to have money. I'm not preaching it's wrong for you to have things. I'm not preaching that. <clears throat> I'm saying the love, amen, of money is the root of all evil. We'll find some scriptures here. We'll, we'll look at some scriptures here to kind of verify what I'm talking about tonight in regards to that, that you can see uh, the covetousness, the drive that has taken place in some's lives uh, that we can see that, recognize that happening in their lives. It's not a matter of going out and getting a job and taking care of your family. In fact, the Bible teaches us that we need to take care of our families. We need to be responsible, especially as men. We need to be responsible and provide for our families, take care of our homes. Amen. Take good care of them. Amen. I believe in that 100%. The Bible says if any provide not for his own, uh, he's worse than an infidel. An infidel is an unbeliever. <clears throat> so if I go and be a couch potato and let my family starve, I'm worse than an unbeliever. I may call myself a Christian all I want, but God wants me to be responsible. The Apostle Paul himself, <clears throat> amen, he was a minister. He didn't have to. But in order to set himself up as an example to show the other Christians how they should be doing, he worked with his hands. He was a tent maker. He did. He found people, Aquila, Priscilla, they were tent makers, and he joined themselves to them. And he did that so that other, he wouldn't be dependent upon other people, but he would also have to take care of himself and to give to those that don't have, those that were lacking. And I'm not talking about... You know, <clears throat> like a, a lot of these uh, programs that's going on in our world today, <clears throat> that's making sluggards out of people. A lot of them are. Amen. I, I'm all for helping somebody that really genuinely needs help. Amen. But I'm I'm 100% against uh, teaching people to be ready for a handout. We need to be responsible people, and we are people in here tonight. Are responsible. I don't have nobody that I know of in here that's even near that, anything like that. But <clears throat> our world has a lot of it going on. And, uh, you know, a lot of the programs that they have uh, promotes that. It does. It makes people like that. Uh, <clears throat> because there's no incentive to make them work. And people should work. Amen. Praise God. And take care of their families. So we believe in all that. And we believe that the Lord wants us to, to do good. And he's going to bless us. And uh, there's promises in his word. Amen. As we live for him. So we're talking about the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay. And it tells us to flee these things. Uh, getting caught up in that. And we're to follow after righteousness. Are you following after righteousness? <clears throat> I said, are you following after righteousness? Are you following what's right by the word of the Lord to live? If you are, you're following righteousness. Amen. Do you know why Jesus was baptized when he didn't have no sins? Did you know Jesus was baptized? John said, I need you to baptize me. You know, and he said, no, no suffer it to be so. Baptize me, John. In other words, the way he's telling John. Because to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, it was in the plan of God, the word of God, amen, for this to be, amen. And so Jesus, though he had no sins, he still did it. He had it. He was baptized. Amen. So what is righteousness? It's doing what's right in the eyes of God. It's doing the word of God. Amen. And Paul told Timothy to follow after righteousness, godliness, Godliness is basically holiness. That's what it is. Pray. Holiness is coming out from among them and being separate. That's not isolationist. But it's, it's not being living a sinful life and partaking of sinful things that the Bible tells us not to. It's coming out. Abstinence is part of holiness. Amen. We don't need a toddy for the body. <laughs> Abstinence, amen. Praise God. Praise God. 
mean, there's lots of areas we practice abstinence in. We don't just do a little bit of sin. Amen. It's being separate from it. It's coming out. Praise God. That's what godliness, living godly, living modestly. Amen. In this world. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. And then it says that we are to follow after uh, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. He mentioned those things. So he says to flee uh, the love of money. Pray. Flee the love of money. Praise God. Let's turn to the Gospel of John. <clears throat> and we got a good example here <clears throat> of what we're talking about so we can see it a little clearer. I'm sure you probably already know about it. You understand what I'm saying, but let's read some scriptures. Sometimes they have a way of really causing an impact upon our understanding and helping us to see the depth of something. I hope that's what this will do tonight as we read. This is uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Then Jesus, six days before uh, the Passover, came to Bethany. How many days before? I'm going to read several Gospels, things from the different Gospels here. But it was about six days uh, before the Passover. He came to Bethany where Lazarus uh, was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. <clears throat> there they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary, that's Martha's sister, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard. Everybody say it's very costly. It costs a lot. Amen. I don't remember what the equivalent would be uh, to 300 pence, but that's what uh, Judas says it was worth. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> he said Mary took a, a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and what she do? She anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, and it indicates which one it was. It says, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. This is what he said. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? It sounds like a, a good thing to say. Why are you wasting this? And you should be giving it to people that need the money. It sounds like, but you got to understand that's just a mask. Amen. For what his real intent was. Sounds good. Amen. But it was uh, deceitful what he said. Amen. Praise God. This he said, Judas did, not be, that he ca uh, cared for the poor, but because he was a what? Handpicked by Jesus and he's still a thief. That's, he's one of the apostles. Amen. Handpicked. Jesus chose him. Another place, Jesus said, Have I not chosen you twelve and one of you is a devil? That's what Jesus told him. He handpicked him. Did Jesus not know? Jesus know, knows everything. He does know. Amen. But listen to what he says. He said, This is what he's, uh, he did, uh, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag. What did he have? The bag. He had the monies from Jesus' ministry. He carried the bag. Amen. Praise God. And bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, uh, let her alone. Now, I don't know. Uh, before I go any farther, I don't know. We don't have a record if Jesus appointed him or not. Do you know of any scripture that says that where Jesus appointed him to be the one carrying the bag? I think he probably ran to it, don't you? I, I may be wrong, but... I think he was, he wanted that job, you know. And there's nothing wrong with wanting a job in the kingdom of God. But I think because of what he had inside of his spirit, he just had to have that job, don't you? That's my opinion, that part is. Amen. But here it is. He had the bag and he bare uh, what was put there. And then said Jesus, what did Jesus tell, uh, tell Judas? Let her alone. Here he is, he's complaining about this woman, breaking this alabaster box, this expensive ointment. And Jesus kind of, he rebukes him, doesn't he? Let her alone. 
I don't know if he said it mildly or what, but I would think that he was probably, at, you know, somewhat put out at old Judas having that kind of a spirit when Jesus knew what was really in his heart. Let her alone. Against the day of my burying, has she kept this? For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. So let's go to Matthew and look at the same scenario, the same episode uh, in the scriptures. We're going to look at verse 8 and then drop down to verse 13. I'm not going to read it all because we just got through reading a lot of it in John. But it says this in verse number 8. But when his disciples saw it, that she broke the alabaster box. When he saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? Verse 13, Jesus uh, says, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, this uh, shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. Guess what? It's happening again tonight. We're doing it right now. Amen. <clears throat> then one of the twelve, called Judas Scarlet, went unto, what did he do? Went unto the chief priests, right? After uh, Jesus tells him this, he goes to the high priest, the chief priest. And it said unto them, <clears throat> What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted, they covenanted with him for what? There's money again. They, they covered it with him uh, for 30 pieces of silver. <clears throat> and from that time, everybody say that time. From that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. Let's go to Mark's gospel. Mark 14 and verse 4 and 5. And then we'll go down to verse 10 and 11 to keep from reading the whole thing again because you didn't hurt it. <clears throat> and there were some that had indignation we read that in the in Matthew's gospel they had indignation uh, within themselves and said why was not this waste of the why was this waste of the ointment made for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor and then it added this I just put this in there they murmured against her so you got to understand this is a pretty sour situation in it Judas is acting pretty sour. He's pretty perturbed. Amen. He's acting pretty carnal. Right? So let's drop to the verse number 10. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. That's what he wanted, wasn't it? And he sought how he might conveniently betray him so when was this time happening six days before Passover that's the first one I told you that remember that so Luke's gospel doesn't bear out about the lady but we can look uh, at the time frame what's happening and I, I want to point out something to you about this right here because this is real important I read all these passages to get bits and pieces of the scenario that took place but let's look at Luke chapter 22, verse 1 through 6. Even though the woman is not mentioned, we're in the same time frame. Okay? It says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near. It wasn't that day, but it was six days before. That's what we read in other gospel. It drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, kill Jesus, for they feared the people. Then, everybody say then, during that time, right? Then Satan entered, then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and coveted it to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. The woman wasn't mentioned, but we know it's the same thing happening. Amen. Praise God. Listen to me. Praise God. The thing that caused Satan 
to be able to enter into Judas Iscariot to the point of which he betrayed Jesus Christ was the love of money. Amen. Praise God. Jesus reprimanded him. Listen to me. He reprimanded him, and that was the straw that broke the camel's back. He refused to be corrected. He did. That is whenever he hardened himself. Satan entered into him, and he went to sell Jesus to get some money. It all stemmed from the love of money. How devastating is this sin? How important is it that we stay conscious, that we don't fall prey, but that we flee from this thing? Amen. It's vitally important, folks. It can happen to people before you know it. There's a lot of people that don't come to church, amen, because they're too busy making money. There's no difference, amen. Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. A lot of people are selling him for a whole lot less than that. And justifying it, just like Judas did, this should have been given to the poor. There's a lot of reasons people give as to why they can't do what God wants them to do. Amen. And obey God. Amen. Praise God. But I'm here to tell you, we need to keep the Lord first in our lives. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say praise the Lord. <clears throat> now I want to show you something else. Yeah, that's one scenario. Praise God. Amen. That's one scenario. Let's look on in Matthew chapter 28 and verses number 11 through 15. To tell you what happened, I didn't get all the scriptures out because I didn't want to take the time to read them all. You can read them yourself. <clears throat> but, but in each one of the Gospels... Uh, pretty well it gives a record of, of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That's what the gospel is all about, right? Hey, he went to the tomb. He, he was crucified, and they put him in the tomb. And, and uh, then the Bible says on the third day he rose again. Amen. Well, the chief priests did, uh, they, didn't, they didn't want it. The word had been gotten out that Jesus had said after three days he was going to rise again. So the chief priests did not want his disciples to come and take him out and get something started. So they talked to the governor, wasn't it? And they, they got him to station some soldiers outside of the tomb. There's a stone rolled in front of the tomb, and they, the, the, the soldiers camped out, you might say, outside of the tomb to make sure nobody would gain access to it and get the body of Jesus out, amen, and uh, start a rumor that he has risen from the dead because he had said after three days I'm going to rise again. So the, uh, the, the chief priest and them uh, went and got the soldiers that they needed <clears throat> and uh, they stationed, stationed them outside of the, of the tomb of Jesus with the stone rolled over the door. Amen. And then we know very early in the morning the angel of the Lord descended. Amen. Praise God. And there was an earthquake. Come on. Praise God. And the angel of the Lord set upon the, the stone that it covered. They rolled the stone away. Amen. And the, the soldiers firsthand saw this happen. It frightened them so much, they all, I'm going to say they fainted. They became as dead men. They, I mean, they passed out. This was so astonishing. Amen. Jesus has risen from the dead. Amen. An angel of the Lord has appeared before these men and done these great and mighty things. These soldiers see it and they fall out. Amen. Praise God. And the next thing you know, when they come to, all they have is an empty tomb. Amen. What an experience. What an experience. Amen. And so this is where we're picking up the story. Amen. The disciples went to Galilee. It was told that they were to go there. And then it says this. Now, when they were going, the disciples, behold, some of the watch, those people that were watching the tomb, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. Talking about the angel appearing and the stone being rolled away. The earthquake that took place. Amen. They witnessed this firsthand. They saw it live, taking place before their very eyes. Amen. My, my, if I'd have saw it, I haven't even saw it, and I believe it, and I'm converted to him. 
If I'd have been there and actually literally saw it, can't you imagine the impact that it would have on your life to change your life, that you give your life to Jesus? Amen. We're tonight, none of us have literally seen that take place. We've just heard about it and we believe it and we've turned to the Lord. But these soldiers saw it in person, saw it happen. Amen. They were witnesses of it. Amen. That's what we're looking at, reading right here. Amen. They went unto the chief priest uh, and, and showed him all these things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave what? They gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they, those soldiers, ah, we know what I said. No, I don't want that money. I believe in Jesus. Amen. He, I'm converted. I'm changing. Amen. I've got an eyewitness of this. But you know what? Money had such a impact on these soldiers. They took it. Can you believe? Somebody could have an eyewitness account of the resurrection and still walk away from it. Money is dangerous if you have a love for it. It's a tool. It's something that we use. These soldiers took the money and they did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day, the scripture says. Can you imagine Somebody experiences such an, 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 an awesome thing take place. Amen. And yet, taking, being offered money to keep yourself quiet and, and lie about it. Their lives are over. They've went to their reward. I hope someplace, some way between the time they did this and their, their time of departure from this earth I pray I hope that they some way repented got convicted of what they did and they turned to Jesus and believed in him I hope they did because I wouldn't want to be in their shoes today I wouldn't want to be in their shoes trade the Savior for money trade the Savior for temporary riches I know it was a lot of money I'm going to tell you something. The devil's offered people a lot of money. There's people I've heard, amen, that sold their souls to the devil to be famous. And with fame comes money. There has been. Many of them. And many people have caused spirits to enter into their lives because they loved money or possessions. Christians don't think like that. I'm talking about real Christians. I'm talking about people who really believe this message. They don't think like that. Money is a tool that we use. Money is a tool that we operate in here. Amen. If we have it, we serve the Lord. If we don't have it, we serve the Lord. If we have it, we praise the Lord. If we don't have it, we praise the Lord. Amen? We keep walking with Him because we don't love it. It's just something that we use. Until we leave and go to our forever home with Jesus. Amen. We're strangers. I said we're strangers. That's what the Bible says. We're pilgrims. Amen. A pilgrim is somebody that's just passing through. Old song. Somebody got it right when they made up that song. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures there's laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And the angels beckon me to heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What people are getting all excited about on this side is simply pavement on the other side. Amen. It's just pavement on the other side. The streets are paved with gold. You know what? I don't care if I live in a wooden shack over there. I just want to go over there. I just want to be over there. 
Amen. I, I'm thankful for the gates of pearl and all that kind of stuff. All the wonderful things that Jesus has. But I really, I'm, you know, if it wasn't that, if it was just a cow pasture with Jesus in it, I'd be satisfied. I'd be plumb happy, amen? In fact, if that's all I got here is a cow pasture in Jesus, I'm happy. I'm, I'm going to serve him. I'm going to keep praising him, amen? If I got a lot, I'm going to praise him, and I'm going to try to do what I can with it. I'm going to try to use it as a tool to further his kingdom. You see, this is the only thing that will last forever. Amen? I hope you're blessed. I hope you have a prosperous life. I hope God just, you know, loads you down. Amen. That you're blessed and, and, you know, praise God. I just hope it doesn't get a hold of you. That's what I'm talking about tonight. I'm just hoping it doesn't get a hold of you. Amen. I hope it's just always just a tool, just a device in your hands to use while you're passing through this world, to provide for your family, but to look at also to those that genuinely have a need. Somebody that's hungry, somebody that's hurting, somebody, I mean, that you're not so connected to it that you can't give it out. If God gives you a lot, He gives it to you to help somebody. Be a, have a blessed life. Be blessed. Amen? But help, don't hoard it. Don't hoard it. Because if you hoard it, it's because you love it. I'm not saying it's wrong to have a bank account. I got one, ain't got much in it. <laughs> if I wrote you a check, it wouldn't be hot, it'd just be warm. <laughs> Praise God. Well, God has a... A method. He has ways to keep us from having money as our Lord. Did you know that? He has a way to keep your even you gotta eat and you gotta make money. Because people that wants that gives you electricity want you to pay your bill. You you can say, I'll pray for you, but they're going to say, I want your money. <laughs> so you need to work and give them money and stuff. You know, we operate with money. The uh, Bible tells us in, what is it, Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, money answers all things. It doesn't mean spiritual things. It means under the sun. Operating in the world, you know, we work and have jobs. and <clears throat> At different times, uh, the, uh, the, the, the process of... Um, it may not be dollar bills. It may be electronic funds. It may be gold or silver, depending on what age you live in, what type of monetary system that, that's operating. In the Bible days, it was sheep and goats and chickens and, and pigeons and turtle doves and, and, and corn. And, and, you know, God has a way in every generation for his people to keep him first in areas for their own benefit. Do you know God doesn't need a penny you have, but he requires it? Did you know that? Did anybody shut me off when I said that? God does not... He, the Bible says, you know, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. If I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you. You know, he owns everything. He owns everything. Every dollar in your pocket is his. Amen. It is. Your house is his. You may not, you know, uh, profess that, but in reality, everything is his. That breath that you're breathing right now is his. He gave it to you. He gives us all things. Amen. Richly to enjoy, it says. He loves it. He wants to give us good things. Amen. <clears throat> but in the in God's program, you might say, even though he needs nothing, he does not have to have anything. He does require certain things for our benefit. 
for our benefit. It's kind of like this right here. God does not need a preacher. But he has chosen through the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. And outside of that, you know, that's his... I'm not saying he won't do anything to reach somebody in another way. But that's God's prime method of reaching people. You know? Cornelius, Acts chapter 10, is a good example. Amen. God doesn't need people, but he has chosen uh, that people are involved in his ministry to reach one another. Do you think God needs your prayers? Do you think God can't do something without you praying? He can do anything he wants, but he won't unless you pray. He won't unless you pray. In other words, a lot of people think, well, God knows what I need, and they never tell him, and then they never get it. He does know what you need, but he wants you to tell him. <laughs> he doesn't need anything. He doesn't need your money, but for your own personal safety, he requires the tenth. Did you know that? Not, not down the road either. He says, give me your first fruits. Did you know he said that? What is the first fruit? The first pickings. Amen. In other words, when this preacher, I'm not preaching to you something I don't do myself. God does not want me to love money. So he tells me to put him first in my finances. Amen. Now, I don't make a whole lot of money. I could make more, you know, from uh, in pastoring, but uh, I I have uh, I make a thousand dollars a month, and the first you know what the first thing I do <laughs> the what I do for Sister Red first thing <laughs> I pay my tithes, Amen. I don't pay them to this local assembly because I'm licensed with the UPC. And, they, and being licensed, any ministerial monies that I uh, get paid for, for preaching, for pastoring, I've got to send my tithes to the organization. And they, in turn, use it for ministerial things. That's the tithes. That's for anything I do secular, secular work, like I go mow a yard with John, or if I do a tithe job, I don't send my tithes to the organization. I give my tithes here. Praise God. In fact, lately, and I'm not trying to brag, I'm just telling you, I'm not telling you to do something I don't do myself. Amen. If I don't do this, I don't have no business being up here preaching. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Amen. God said, told Jesse Ratliff, I'll use me for an example, to pay, to, to put the first fruits of your increase. Amen. So if I get a if I get a thousand dollars, immediately I write out a hundred dollars to the organization. That's what I do. I put it in the mail, send it off. First thing, praise God. I try not to never do anything before that. Amen. I'm kind of a fanatic about it. I like that. Amen. I have uh, lately, and I'm, I'm not saying this braggadociously. I I don't even mention it to people, but I, I, I'm saying it because I want you to understand. I'm not preaching to you about something I don't do myself. I've been living for the Lord since uh, 1979. I can't tell you the exact date when I fully come into the truth. It was just a little while, a few months there, and I came into the truth of uh, knowing that you're to be baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't know that at first. You know, I was just coming. So I can't remember before that time. But once I found out the truth, since that time, I cannot remember. That's not saying a whole lot because I ain't got very good memory. But there's never even been one time I didn't pay my tithes. I've had a whole house full of kids. I know what it is to live in a house where you look outside through the cracks and not through the window. <laughs> I've been there. I know what it is to eat a lot of beans and rice along with the rest of my family. But I'm here to tell you, not one time have I ever missed not paying my tithes. Because you know why? Because they're not my tithes. Those are God's tithes. That's God's money. And God told me, take my money to the house of God and put it in there. Amen. Keep me first in your finances and I'll bless you. Amen. 
I want you to know something. You may think it doesn't have nothing to do with it, but I don't have no bills today. I own my house. The church did not buy it. I worked with my hands for years. Amen. I own everything I got. Except from, uh, what do I know? <laughs> I guess I own everything. <laughs> I don't have no bills. I try not to be foolish. Amen. I haven't had a lot of money to work with. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, praise God. Amen. I, you know, I believe it pays to obey God. and Keep Him first, amen, in every area of your life. Praise God. I've went through some trying times. I've went through times before, and I was stayed faithful to pay my tithes and keeping God first in my finances because I didn't want the love of money to outweigh my love for God. And I have a choice. And sometimes, Sister Everett, I had to operate by faith. Sometimes I didn't have the money to pay the bills, but I still took God's money and didn't take it from Him, but I carried it to the house of God. And some way, God worked everything out. Amen? And we had food. It may not have been T-bone steak, but I don't remember ever going hungry. I have had to wait a little bit. But as you can tell, I'm not very thin. Amen? God tries us. So God calls us. He doesn't need a thing that I got. But he says, give it to me. Keep me first in that area of your life. Amen. And it's, a, it's every bit of it, especially in those trying times, it is an act of faith. And the just shall live by faith. The just doesn't look at what they don't have to pay their bills. The just looks at, I'm going to obey God and keep God first in my life. And I'm going to trust Him. I'm not going to take His money. I'm going to carry it to Him. Amen? Praise God. And He's going to take the 90 that He gives me. And He's going to make it stretch. He's going to make it work. He's going to make it happen. Amen? Wherever it comes or whatever goes in my life, God's going to work it out. And He has. He has, and He will. Amen. I see a lot of people struggling. And oftentimes I find out they're not practicing that. I'm not saying that to criticize. I'm just saying that because I love people. And I want people to be blessed by God. And I don't want people to be lost. Amen. I'm not trying to get your money tonight. I'm not going to increase my tithe if you put... If you haven't been paying your tithes, you start paying. I'm still going to be getting. Unless the Lord increases it some other way. I do this by choice. Amen. My wife and I started this church for many years ago. 18 years ago. Amen. Praise God. I didn't even take, receive tithes. Until I had a heart attack. And I quit my job. I was 57 when that took place, I think. I didn't even take no tithes. So 15 years. I worked with my hands to take care of my family. Not that I couldn't. I want the church to do good. I want the church to do good. Do you want the church to do good? Amen. Be obedient to God. Put God first. Amen. He's dependent on you. He doesn't have to have you, but He tells you to do it. So that money doesn't become a Lord in your life. Amen. That's the truth. Oh, praise God. Amen. Let's look at Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. You've got to understand. Some of the most faithfulest persons. You've got to understand, i got the books now. <laughs> so I'm having, I've am seen all the, everything. You know, I didn't even ever want to look before. And I really don't care to look now. But I just need to take care of these things. You know, but some of the most faithfulest persons to God is not the rich people. Nobody's rich in this church. But some people does pretty good. You know who's the most faithful people in this church? Not all. There's some that does pretty good. You know, and they are faithful as clockwork. But the poor people. The people that are on fixed incomes. You can, I can look at their records. I ain't going to name none because, you know, I can't say that about everybody. And I ain't going to start showing you who does and who doesn't. That's none of your business. But I'm just telling you. Amen. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus went up to the treasury and he watched those that were putting into the treasury of God, into the 
offering. He watched them. He went up deliberately and watched what people were putting in. He does that here too. He does. He watches us. He watches what we do towards his kingdom. It's not my kingdom. It's not for Jesse Ratliff. If it was, I'd be taking all the tithes. I ain't worried about that. I don't want that. Amen. I want the kingdom to go to do good. Amen. Praise God. But Jesus went up and the, there was people casting in. Amen. Some of them were casting in a lot. Amen. But you know what? They still had a lot. And one poor widow went up and she cast in two mites, which make a farthing, however much that is. You know how much that is, Brother Demon? I, don't know, I can't remember all that stuff. But it wasn't much. I'd say it's probably like a couple of pennies. We'll just use that. She cast in a penny. Jesus said, she just put in more than everybody. Did you understand? Jeez, she just, listen to she. He recognized she just put in more than anybody. Because she, listen to me, the rest of them put in of their abundance. He wasn't criticizing them. But he was just pointing out. They put in. But this lady put in everything she had into the offerings of God. Amen. See, this is the way it works. Amen. Praise God. You may make a dollar. Amen. And your tithes may be 10 cents. And somebody else may make $200. And their tithes may be $20. And they both put in. They put in in the eyes of God the same amount. Because they put their tenth in. And if somebody just made 10 cents, we had some of the Sunday school kids put in. I had a tithe for one of them. I won't mention who it was. It was $1.49. <laughs> that would have been $10.49. And 49 cents would it be? Uh, I want you to know something. They paid their tithes. They paid as much as pastor paid. They paid as much as the highest tithe payer in here. Amen. They did in the eyes of God. Amen. Because it's not the amount, it's the amount. <laughs> it's not the amount, it's the amount. If you can hear what I'm saying. Amen. Praise God. If you make $10 and you put in 90 cents, you have not paid the tenth. You have not obeyed God. You have it. You might have, you know, think in your own mind, your own reason. God didn't say give me the ninth. He said, give me the tenth. Keep me first in your finances. You see, everybody's like, a lot of people, not everybody, a lot of people are like Judas Iscariot. They're coming up with all kinds of reasons why this should happen, amen? Or why I can't, amen? Let me tell you something. Keep God first in your monies, and God will keep you first. He doesn't need your money, but you're keeping him first in that area of your life, amen? Oh, somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Hope I don't drive nobody else, nobody off, <laughs> I just want people to be saved. You say, Brother Ratliff, God won't save people if they don't do tithe? Well, I'm nobody's judge, and I don't send people to heaven or hell. But let's look at Malachi. Chapter 3, verse 6. I know that's the Old Testament. For I am the Lord. What does he not do? He doesn't change. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, what did they do? You have gone away from mine ordinances. This is an ordinance, right? And have not kept them. What did he tell them to do? Return unto me. How are you going to return to the Lord? By doing his ordinances. Return unto me. And I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, this is what a lot of people say. <laughs> We're in, shall we return? <laughs> We've been coming to church and, you know. A lot of people come to church, but they haven't returned to the Lord. Because they don't keep his ordinances. Huh? They don't keep his ordinances. If you return to the Lord, you start keeping his ordinances. The things he's taught us to do. That's how you come into this building doesn't mean you return to the Lord. I'm glad everybody's here. Please keep coming. And bring somebody with you. Amen. Wherein shall we return? Then he asked a question to them. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. He tells these folks this. 
But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? God doesn't change, you got to remember. So if he doesn't change, he's still the same today, isn't he? Wouldn't that mean that? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever? Wouldn't that mean that? So wherein have you robbed me? Now, do you want a robber up here preaching to you? Huh? you if I wasn't paying my tithes, that's why I said, well, I go, I don't need to be up here. Right? And you may think I'm a pretty good old Joe. I hope you do. But you really and truly don't count unless God thinks it. The only way it counts is if he thinks it. And you know what? That's who I'm trying to please, not nobody else. If I was trying to please you, I wouldn't be preaching about this and that. But because I want to please him, and he wants you to go to heaven. And so I'm going to teach and preach whatever the word of God says. And I believe he wants me to teach on this. Wherein have we robbed thee? He says that these folks had robbed him in tithe and in offering. Amen. Then he says this. Whew, this one cuts. You're cut, cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. A whole bunch of them was doing it. They quit bringing tithe and offering. And study it out. I got had a bunch of scriptures in the green that shows scriptures where they did these things. They brought their tithes and offering to the house of God. They didn't send them to a TV preacher or radio preacher. They brought it to where the house of God, the gathering of the saints. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So he tells them, uh, even this whole nation. Then he tells them, he said, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. The storehouse was in the house of God. Amen? That there may be meat in my house. And prove me. This is the only place I can remember the Lord telling them to prove. You know, you test me. See if I don't. You know? You do what's right. Keep my ordinances. And you see what happens. They're having trouble, folks. These folks are having trouble. And the Lord says, you're cursed. You're cursed. You're not keeping my ordinances. And so he tells them, he says, you prove me. You check me out by this. You do what I'm telling you to do. You start bringing the tithes and offering to my house. Prove me therewith, uh, saith the Lord of hosts. And, and if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be enough room to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer. See, you, you can make a lot of money, but it can be devoured. You understand? Another scripture talks about uh, putting, getting a lot coming in and putting it into, a, Jeremiah preached it here a while back wasn't it that scripture that you used about putting it in a, in, a, in, in a bag with holes in it you stuff it full but it's empty <laughs> you know what's happening it's being devoured and God's telling them here he said you prove me I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. All nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Praise God. God wants to bless his people. But if you look at it through God's view, don't look at it through your view, look at it through God's view. You got to understand, God well, don't want any other gods in your life. And we read idolatry. We read it last week, I believe it was. Idolatry is as which as uh, I mean, uh, covetousness is as which idolatry. There it is. Cove <laughs> covetousness, you know, hoarding, having to have, gotta have more. That all is linked to the love of money. The thing that caused Judas Iscariot to sell his Savior. The thing that caused those soldiers, amen, to say, hey, you give me that money and I'll say that this thing about Jesus is not real. Money is a powerful, powerful influence in people's lives. In fact, it will tempt you to not, listen to me, take care of your things with God. You'll justify it all left and right amen but the truth of the matter is amen it's the love of money people gotta have it don't let that get a hold of you amen praise God 
You know, people think a lot of times, you know, but I won't be able to. My bill's $100. I, all I've got is 90 If I pay my tithes, I'm going to be that much, much farther away. I want you to know something. I'd rather give God his tenth and trust him to take care of it than trust what that, that I had in my hand would do. Amen. I would. I've done it. You can ask my wife when we had a lot of kids. There was times we was in a strange town, Freeport, Texas at that time. And I was, didn't have a job. Listen to me. I was looking for a job. That's why we went down there. I went down there and I went. Sister Ever, I went to a place. We got a duplex. And we got it for $50 a week, wasn't it? $50 a week, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, and uh, the lady, from what I remember, she kind of spotted us that first week. So that I, you know, I was going to try to get a job. We had... How many? Four kids at that time in the house. Yeah, and expecting you know, something. I can't remember all that she does. <laughs> Amen. We went to a strange town and didn't know anybody. Okay? There we was. That lady was kind, and she let us get into that new place. We didn't have no place to live. We was in a little Chevy Chevette. Remember those? <laughs> we always looked like a pack of sardines in that little old car, zipping around. And... uh but we, you know, it was good gas saver, though. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a bed even. stuff. So, but we was able to get that two-room, that two-bedroom apartment. It's a little bit dinky duplex thing. A little bit sh- a shack. Pretty, I mean, pretty rough. Pretty rough. It, well, it wasn't as bad as the other one. <laughs> but it wasn't much. It wasn't much. Let me, let, let, me, let, me, let me talk to you. But listen to me. We was in a strange... We went to church one night, you know, and we... And, we went to church. Listen to me. We went to a church. It was a new church, right? In another town. We went to another church. We didn't have no groceries, folks. We didn't have no food. We didn't. We was not hungry. We have not gone without, but we didn't have none, Sister Ramon. And I walked in to that duplex. After church that night, we got home. We walked into that duplex. And in our floor was three or four sacks of groceries. Amen. Had steaks and all kinds of stuff in them. I didn't even... I didn't, I didn't, I, to this day, I don't know how those things got in there. I mean, we locked our door unless that lady did it. Maybe she did it. I don't know. She never told us that she did. Nobody ever said that they did. Amen. Praise God. The one thing that was, <clears throat> that night when we went to the church, we went to the church, this brother came up to me, and he's trying to be good to me, be nice to me. It was a fairly good-sized church. To me, it is. It had about 300 people probably in it, somewhere like that. Pretty good size. Brother... Wedgeworth, Wedgeworth Church. We went and visited him. My pastor, which died here just a little bit back, Brother Stroud, he is renowned, known for eating cayenne peppers. Isn't he, Angela? I think, oh, you don't know. He is, I mean, he grows them all the time and he eats them, I think, or did. Amen. He was, I mean, all the time, cayenne peppers, cayenne peppers, cayenne peppers. Amen. And, uh, <clears throat> That night before I went home, you know, before I went home, that night a, a brother from that church came up to me, knowing nothing, hardly knowing me, just meeting me, you know, walked up to me. He said, Brother Ratliff, Brother so-and-so came up to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to the, he didn't come up, to, I was gonna, he was going to come up to the church, and I had him a bag uh, of peppers that I, that I had grown, and I was going to give them to him, and he said, he didn't show up. Would you like them? And I said, yeah, thank you. Praise God. Amen. I went home with cayenne peppers and all those sacks of groceries in our floor. You can say it's coincidence or whatever you want, but my pastor shows up. My pastor shows up. Amen. If he'd have come and all those things hadn't happened, I'd have nothing to take care of. And above that, God just kind of put a little token on it with those cayenne peppers. I know he did that. He did. Those cayenne peppers. That brother just came up out of the blue and said, Brother Adam, you want to... I ain't never had nobody since then ever give me any cayenne peppers like that (laughs) that I can remember. God has never let me down. I've went right to the brink. I've been there and not had nothing. And then he comes through with something. I've been to the point I never saw a miracle until I was in want. 
I was asked to preach. We was living in a, that house where you could see out the cracks without raising the window. We ate a lot. Of, we bought rice by the 25-pound bags and beans too. You know, because that went a long way with a lot of kids. It made for a kind of smelly house. But anyway, praise God. We ate a lot of beans and rice. Yeah, cornbread, tomatoes and noodles, things that went a long way. And the pastor that we was going to church under at that time, it wasn't Brother D. Long at that time in Cameron. This was years ago. <clears throat> we went there to help them because they were starting a, a church. And I was broke. I had an old wreck of a car. I lived in Buckles in that house. <clears throat> and the pastor during the week had asked me to preach I don't know I think it was Wednesday night and uh, I'm telling you folks I didn't have no money Brother Demon I didn't have no money and my car was on E and I'll be honest with you I didn't even know what I was going to preach I did not know what I was going to preach I was blank but the time came for the service, and my car was on E, and I took off. There was nine miles in it from Buckholz Cameron. <clears throat> my car was on E, and I was praying because I had heard, I had heard of people before praying and their gas gauge going up. I've heard of that, never seen it. I've heard of that. But I knew if he did it for them, he could do it for me. And so I started praying. I said, Lord, <clears throat> I don't have no gas and I need some gas I need some gas Lord and I was looking at that gas gauge and I was driving it was on E I was driving Lord I need some gas Lord I need some gas all the way to church and I was keeping on going I was feeling pretty good I was watching that gas gauge and it was still on E oh Lord I've heard how you can put gas in people's cars you know I've heard it Lord I believe it I believe you really did that and you can do it for me too I need some gas I didn't know if that gas gauge was going to go up or he's just going to take me all the way on air. But I need some gas, Lord. I need some gas. And I got halfway there. My, I, was, I was going down a decline and my car started going. I was halfway. So I kind of pulled over to the side and let her coast. And I was praying. saying, God, it's now or never. It's now. <laughs> I need it now. My car is doing this, you know. Yeah, and it finally I was on the shoulder and I was praying and I didn't know what was going to happen but I was praying and I was trying to believe God and uh, I was in the middle between Cameron and Buckles and uh, finally the car I'm telling you the instant that my car stopped when it stopped rolling Something caught me out of the corner of my eye. You know who it was? It was my pastor. He came from the coast. He was coming from the coast. From down by the ocean. And he took me and got me some gas. And I went and I preached about walking by faith. <laughs> he came through for me. Say what you will. He came through for me. It didn't happen like I thought it. I was looking for it to happen. But he came through for me. I wasn't even late for church. He came through. He did it. But I had never, even through all those times, never missed taking care of his things first. I didn't have a lot to give, but it was what he required I paid my tithes and gave offerings as much as I could. And he's never let me. I found groceries in my house. I've been provided gas. I could tell you a lot of stories. We was here, same time frame of life. We was going through the financial trouble. Time. And we left Belton heading again, no gas. We was at, going to Midway at that time. 
I was on E. Had all the kids, an old beat up car. And I was going down and I got off the highway, midway, exit. I didn't have no gas. Had enough gas to get there, didn't know how I was gonna get back. But we went to church. We didn't miss. We didn't call the preacher and say, we don't have enough gas to get back. I didn't call him to say that. I just I had enough to get there and we went. I didn't know how it was going to work out. We got off a midway exit. There's a stoplight there, you know. And you got to take a right to go up to the church. There used to be. It's no longer there. There was a filling station there. Set a pretty good ways off the highway about from here to the road. About from here to the road. Out here. That's how, maybe not quite that far. You remember that gas station? I pulled off and I was pulling up to that light. A man, I don't know to this day who he was. I cannot tell you. He did not know me. I did not know him. I heard somebody hollering, running towards me with money in his hand. He was running over to our car. He said, the Lord just told me to give you this. You, you needed some gas. That's what he told me. I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> we got home that night. Amen. That wasn't an accident, folks. Listen to me. That wasn't an accident. That would not have happened if I had never got in a pinch. I've never seen those things happen whenever I had a pocket full of money. God's not going around doing shows, but you keep Him first in your life. You let Him be first in your finances. You let Him be first in every area of your life. You let Him be your Lord. He's going to take care of you. You may be tried, but He will take care of you. He will take care of you. You will be all right. But if you don't, you're expressing unbelief. And though, if you look in the book of Revelation, the unbelievers are going to lead the pack into hell. They're at the front of the pack, the front of the line. Amen. Before adopters and fornicators and all that stuff, unbelievers are going in first. They're heading the line into the lake of fire. We got to live by faith. And that means sometimes when we don't have it, we don't put God second. We keep God first. Amen? Come on, we keep God first. Amen? Amen. And you may say, my little ain't much. Hey, listen to me. If it's what God requires, it's all you need. That's all you need. It's as much as the billionaire put in his money. You be faithful. Amen. Praise God. Stand with me if you would. I'll, I'll be quiet. I didn't get finished, but I'll be quiet. I would, I, I'm nearly hesitant. I'm not trying to tell you to do this. This is what I've been trying to do lately. When I get my tithes from the church, Sister Cooper has been signing, uh, filling out my check. You, how many of y'all get more than $900 a month? You know, do you get more than nine hundred dollars a month? Huh? Do you, Sister Cooper? You get more than nine hundred? Anybody else get more than nine hundred a month? You get more than nine hundred a month? Yeah, you get more than nine hundred dollars. I get I I I live on nine hundred dollars a month, and I pay my tithes. If I can do it, you can do it. If I make more money during the month, I pay tithes on that money. But you know what I've been trying to do lately? I'm not, I'm not saying this for a pat on the back. I'm just telling you, I've been trying to pay double tithes. Not on my monthly deal, but anything I make, I've been trying to put in. The, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just telling I want God's thing to go. I want God's thing to go. My, my nephew, I did a month-long job. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I don't care. I ain't trying to get nothing anyway from God. I'm just trying to tell you I want this to work. I care about what's going on in his kingdom. I care what, what's going on in Belton. Not for my sake, but for his kingdom's sake. There's people that need saved. I want this to go forward. I want this church to have a new sanctuary and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? I'm going to be involved in helping make it happen by being obedient to God. Amen. I'm not asking you to do this. Amen. Praise God. It's easy when you make 40 to put $8 in. I got tested here a few months ago. Somebody gave me $4,000 that I worked for over a month. Worked for it. I put $800 in. 
My, my tithes went $800. My tithes would have been $400. I put $800 in. I'm not saying for a pat on the back. I wouldn't even tell him, wouldn't even mention it. But I'm trying to tell you, I'm not in this for my money. We, let's make it happen for Jesus. Amen? Let's make it happen for the Lord. Amen? Praise God. I, I want to make it happen for the Lord. Amen? Praise God. I ain't getting a lot of amens. Amen. I'm not asking you to do that. Please don't think I am. I'm not asking you. But listen to me. Just be faithful in what he's told you to do. Be faithful to him. Do it for him. If you go, if you leave this church, wherever you go, do it. Do it for the kingdom of God. And God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Ultimately, we're not buying our way into heaven. But listen to me. We can't be rebellious and be saved. We can't. We can't be rebellious. We need to obey God. You'd be surprised when we let Jesus totally, completely, really be the Lord. Really. We'd be surprised how many things he would fix in our lives. Fix them. Fix them. You're not buying him, but he would fix them. He's not going to hurt nobody. And the only reason why he does all those things, not because he needs it, but because he's saving you. Saving you from the things like Judas. Judas, if anybody didn't need that bag, you didn't need it. You should have fleed from that thing. Give it to somebody else. If you got that kind of temptation. He wasn't fleeing from it. He wanted it. Give me that bag. I want it. And the love of money got him. I said the love of money got him. The love of money got those soldiers. The love of money. I hope they repented. I hope they did. Judas didn't make it. Judas didn't make it. I want you to make it. I want to make it. I know you don't like to hear this, D. Huh? You don't like to hear this? I, I got a responsibility to tell it. I do. Praise God. Honor God. Let's pray. Jeremiah, dismiss us in prayer, would you please? <clears throat> Praise God. Oh, Lord. Yes.